Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks, and I did a video that I think is pretty special, and it really makes me feel good when somebody tries to make it or makes it. But the gentleman is having trouble. He's got some leaks, as you can see, because he, he didn't follow all the instructions or maybe I didn't explain it good. And where you're getting your leaks from is he said he used the virtual segment leak key. There's some, that's a leak that uh, won't fly. You've actually got two lines there. I mean, these lines are not connected. And that's one thing, and see there's a double line. That's one reason I kind of made this video because it's really pretty cool. So let's just start again from scratch. I'm just gonna start in the center of the page I'm actually gonna use his word, Emily, put it in the center of the page. Go and immediately go ahead and take the fill out and make it a hairline and go ahead and it really doesn't matter, but and convert it to a curb. If you kind of get used to doing that with text, when you do anything like with a well, and I'm really excited. He used my same font I suggested and used snowflakes off Wingding. But let's go to effects and contour, let's contour to the outside in black so we can see the difference. And that's pretty good. Let's just expand it out and hit P. We just want some of the edges touching, but we're too big on that Emily. And uh, that isn't really too bad. And I'm gonna change my nudge factor for just a second, but then remember to put it back then we're gonna select the Emily and just kind of nudge it over just a little bit. There we go. We just want something connected. I'm gonna immediately set my nudge factor back on four inches because we're gonna need it in a second. Now I'm gonna get his out of the way and I'm gonna use the Smart Fill tool on the word Emily. And I'm gonna nudge it out of the way. Might have to nudge it out of the way more than four inches because it looks like my box is more than four inches big. So we'll make it eight because I double double dip there. Now we're gonna go and take contour or object, break contour apart and immediately get rid of the red Emily because we do not want it to cut it out. We'll go ahead and get rid of all this. This is where the smart fill, and see there was this problem. This is where the smart fill tool really helps you and I would do this each time before you start the snowflake. Nudge that over, nudge that over. This thing has some internal parts. I don't know if I'd keep them or not, but for the video, we're gonna go ahead and keep them. And then get rid of this. You don't need it again. Take the whole thing, left click, right click. There's your outline, there's your cutout. Now, because we nudged it correctly, there's our Emily back, but we're gonna keep it out. And I'm also happy that he, he made some extra copies of Snowflakes. I'm only gonna add two for this video, because it ought to be pretty simple. And get you a different size. And there is actually something with the Snowflake going on. There's a, a box and that might've been your problem. I see, I saw something, but it, regardless, and well, that's what it was. It wasn't in a text yet. It was still a text and that's your bounding, that's your shaping toolbox. So immediately, and I would even do that before you make copies is I would make duplicates of a curve and not a text. Now let's bring in our snowflake. And I just cut mine out the other day and it's really pretty thin. Uh, so you might want to consider making this Snowflake a little bit thicker. And you want it touching a couple of places. And we're good. I'd actually maybe maybe make it either bigger or smaller. You don't want these. Well, you can. We're good enough. I would actually move this over so it touches all three of the areas. And this is why the Smart Fill tool works so well. 
Now we just need to fill in those same parts again. And you'll just kind of keep looking until you think it looks like there's something missing right there. It's that part right there. There's that little bitty part right there. That looks pretty good. Well, get it again. We've got these two little bitty sections that you can either leave or not. And that looks good. So we're gonna left click, right click. We don't have to do any welding. There's our Emily steel. Go right back in there and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do one more snowflake and we'll put it doing the same thing. And you could have probably done both of them. You could have done both of them at one time. Because you're going to have to redo this again. But it saves you a lot of time. And evidently the virtual segment delete key didn't work for him. Whoop. I went outside the box. And um, he had some problems. So if you just go through there and you know now which ones you need to put and which ones you don't. And two more. Whoop. The one outside the box. So I actually coated in them. And we are good to go. Now, left click, right click in hairline. You're also, you're set on CMYK, uh, but that doesn't really matter on this. Uh, and then nudge this back. And our circle is 5.2. So let's make another circle. Let's do this. Let's control G and make a duplicate of that or group it together and hit P, put it in the center of the page. Because now we need an outside circle and we're at 5.2. So let's make this one 5.5. That's big for an ornament. Uh, I, you could do the whole thing and then shrink it down. You really don't... I. I don't think, and we didn't put the date of the birth or whatever in here, but that that's beside the point um, if it's a baby's plaque. But I would maybe make the outside, so holding down this, uh, the shift key, and then just do the hanger again. So there's, I guess, part three, and hope that helped him a little bit. And thank you for watching.